Welcome to People Like You. Few would argue that our cities and communities are cleaner and safer when we all work together to achieve that goal. One organization has seen tremendous results with this initiative and has taken it globally. Stay with us. When people adopt their neighborhood, yeah. when they begin to bless rather than blast, trust will be established. Mm -hmm. Under the guise of transformation, we see Vallejo as a destination city. We've declared it the city of God. And because we've done that, um, business, government, and education has totally been transformed in our city. Welcome back. Transform Our World Network is working to do just that. Transform our world beginning with our very own communities. Dr. Ed Silvoso, founder and president of Harvest Evangelism and this newly formed global network is a strategist and Bible teacher who specializes in nation and marketplace transformation. He is also the author of numerous books, including the best-selling Anointed for Business and his newly released Ecclesia Rediscovering God's Instrument for Global Transformation. So glad you are with us today. I am delighted to be here. I, I don't even want to say how long I have known you. <laughs> okay, but you've been in ministry 59 years right. and counting. And I used to come here to this studio about 25 years ago. Probably you were in elementary I, I, school. I'm going to say <laughs> I was in elementary school. I don't know if I can really stand by that. <laughs> and I also have a book that your um, wife wrote, Food, Family, and Fun, A right. Glimpse into Our Family's Table Traditions and Travels by Ruth Palau Silvoso. Mm. So thank you for this book today. I appreciate it. Talk to us about um, what's going on in the Bay Area. Y you are um, you are involved globally. Yeah. I mean, everyone yeah. knows Ed Silvoso mm -hmm. and your history and ministry. Mm -hmm. But recently you shared with me your heart specifically right. for the Bay, and things right. are really happening. Talk about that. Well, let me put it in context. Number one, I love the Bay Area. I think this is one of the most beautiful places on earth. But more important than that, God loves the Bay Area. Yeah. Now, can I say that some religious people tell me, oh, you don't know how evil it is, how perverted. I said, fine. We met the first requirement, sin abounds. We <laughs> qualify for the second one. Grace is ready to overflow. So this is what is happening. I have the privilege to lead a network of about 4,000 influencers all over the world. We are seeing presidents, governors, CEOs come to the Lord. But every time the plane was landing, coming back, my heart ached because I yes. said, Lord, what about the Bay Area? And then we were in prayer with our lead intercessor, Ted Haas, and we said, we're going to pursue God. Is the Bay Area God's ugly duckling? You know, why not? And we were praying and praying, and then the Holy Spirit broke through and told us, prepare the way because I'm coming to the Bay Area. So this is what is happening. The number one school, high school, in America is in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. Valley Christian Schools. I mean, number one campus, a hundred and fifty million Fantastic dollar campus. School. I'm on, on the board. Dr. Cliff Doherty is mm -hmm. a superintendent. And look what happened. That school that is top, top, top. Top notch. Been there. Yes. Have been led to adopt the public school around mm -hmm. it. Because God said to Dr. Doherty, my righteousness is not righteous until it has touched the poor and the ones that are down and out. So they adopted the public school system, they built computer labs, they taught music, they did mentoring without mentioning God. And God began to work and this year alone over a thousand students and teachers came to the Lord because the Christian school decided to serve the public school system. In the area, wow. Number two, there is uh, a construction company that this lady came to us. This is a fifth generation construction company. I understand it's the largest in the Bay Area. And this lady read the book Ecclesia and anointed for business. And she realized this is not a construction company. This is my parish. 
I'm going to train people here. And she dedicated the company, and then when we have more time, I'll be glad to give you details. But every building that is being built by this lady in the Bay Area has Bibles in the foundation, has Bible verses on the trusses. I mean, before anything goes on to cover that, she the, the Word the of God is there. People are coming to the Lord, reconciliation is taking place, and then, of course, the crown jewel is Vallejo, not too far from here, where God is doing extraordinary things. So bottom line, God is moving in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and he hasn't even begun to move yet. <laughs> well, I want you to talk about the program uh, that you've got going on. And in regards to Vallejo, I know we're going to talk about it a little later in the broadcast, but. Uh, my heart is there. That's where I met my husband. That oh, was a church where, as my in my youth, I got involved in a television ministry. Okay. Met my husband, and then the rest is history. Oh, good. So I have a heart for the city of Vallejo, mm. and I've watched all that it has gone through, mm. and the changes there. So I'm very excited, and that was one of the reasons I was so excited to have you be on the program today too, was mm. because of what's going on okay. with your ministry. But you've introduced the program called Adopt a Cop. Adopt a Cop, and also Adopt your street. Adopt a Cop uh, came to the forefront because as we all know, year, two years ago, the violence, the disconnect between the police yes. and some ethnic groups really, really reached um, proportion. proportion that broke our heart. So what we did, this program actually began in San Jose in the 90s. Really? When San Jose was going south, there was violence all over. We met with the mayor, her name was Susan Hammer. We asked permission to do this. She referred us to Chief Covarrubias, that was the chief of police. We told him, look, there are 100 plus churches. We would love to adopt the police officers. We would like to pray for them. We would like to let them know that they are not alone. And the chief liked it so much that he wrote a procedural manual. How do you adopt a cop according to regulation? <laughs> and put the seal of the city and made it, I don't know if mandatory, but yeah, you know, if the chief says, I suggest, you say it's yes. Sir. Happen. And at that moment, the crime rate began to decline in California. In, in the San Jose, Jose area. Okay, so now, about two years ago, we launched that program and he's doing wonders. People, because the police are in touch with the most crude expressions of evil. Yeah, yeah. And, and on top of that, they are being rejected many and, times. And, and so you are showing their are acceptance. things are changing, Deborah. Right. And actually... Let's, more after the break, because I, I want to hear more detail about what's going okay. on. More with Ed Silvoso, so don't go away. Everybody is a minister and labor is worship. We were in the mayor's office oh. praying with him. We continue to cover Vallejo in prayer. Welcome back. We're with Ed Silvoso. So you were about to tell us about how this program that started in San Jose yeah. years and years ago is now expanded across the Bay. Actually, across the Bay and all over the, the U.S. Group. because the church is the only institution that has a branch in every neighborhood and an agent in every block. And when we understand that we don't go to church, we are the church. We are the church. As I explain in my book, Ecclesia, Every time the word church is used in the New Testament, it refers to people. Mm -hmm. Now imagine now neighbors who are believers, okay? They not only adopt the police officer and let him know, you know, we are praying for you. Actually, we instruct them if they are having coffee, pay the bill, you know, don't give them any money because that will get you in trouble. That's true. But when people adopt their neighborhood, yeah. when they begin to bless rather than blast, when they fellowship with the lost rather than judge them, sooner or later, trust will be established. Mm -hmm. And when trust is established, they will hear a problem that they are struggling with. Yeah. And at that moment, you introduce the Lord Jesus said, well, you know, I love to talk to the Lord about it. I still have to find one person who will turn me down. And what I found is this.
When you pray for believers, you get some answers to prayer. When you pray for non-believers, you get answers most of the time because God wants them to know that he cares. Yes. So then adopt the cup, adopt the block. These programs are on our website. They are for free. People can go there and sign up. And we are beginning to see signs of change there. And transformation, because that's at the heart of what you want to see. Absolutely. Your heart has always been yeah. to see change lives. Yeah. So how does transformation occur? Well, it occurs because we have to change our paradigms. You see, we live, <clears throat> the devil wants us to believe that the church is a POW camp being held captive by evil forces waiting for the great liberator to set us free. My Bible and your Bible and everybody's Bible doesn't end that way. It says that the leaders of nations that are safe will bring the honor and the glory of those nations as a wedding present to Jesus. That means that when that day comes, I picture the governor of California leading the procession of California safe. But we need to change the paradigm. We are here to win, not to lose. We are here to overcome. And that's why in my book I talk about mm -hmm. five paradigms that are like changing your glasses, you know. And so I can cover Which are these? Yes, please do. What are the what The are first the one is that the Great Commission is like a coin. It has two sides. We are very familiar with Mark 16. Okay, go and preach the gospel to every creature. But we don't understand Matthew 28. Disciple nations. Teach nations everything that Jesus taught us. So then first paradigm, the Great Commission is not just about people, it's about nations. Paradigm number two, the marketplace, business, education, government, which is the heart of the nation, has already been redeemed. Jesus died not only for souls, he died for the whole enchilada, if I may use a Latino <laughs> metaphor, okay? He died for business, for education, for government. Now we must reclaim it. So when believers understand God wants me to disciple a nation, beginning with the place where I work. The blood of Jesus that paid for my salvation, paid for the salvation of this business. Mm -hmm. That leads us to the third paradigm. Everybody is a minister, and labor is worship. And that means that when I go to work, actually I don't go to work, I go to worship. Picture now a taxi driver driving a taxi as an act of worship. Mm -hmm. a, a waiter bringing food unto the glory of God. A lawyer filing a brief. And now all of a sudden you look at the Bay Area right. and you see worship going up all over the place. Like Pat Gelsinger says of VMware, yeah. that uh, it is my church. Yeah. That is my congregation. Yep. The people within my company right. or my right. congregation. And, and you don't go to work, you go to minister. But you work, of course. Right. The fourth paradigm is that we are to take the kingdom of God where the gates of Hades are. And the gates of Hades are not in the church. The gates of Hades are in the marketplace. So when Christians go to work, sure that greater is he who is in them than the one who is messing up with the company, with the economy, and rather than cursing, they bless, things begin to happen. In the fifth paradigm, and this is so evident in Vallejo, and I imagine you will be covering We're going that. to talk about that in the next yeah. segment, but yes. That transformation has to be tangible. It's mm. useless to say, oh, we're having a revival. God showed up. We are being transformed. And then within a mile of that church, there is poverty, there is crime, and all that. So the fifth paradigm is the elimination of systemic poverty. And it's already happening, and it's happening in the Bay Area. If we would, as Christians, follow these five paradigms, we would see a change, a transformation, yeah. basically, of the entire Bay. And if yeah. this is done and duplicated all yeah. over, yeah. then we would see a complete transformation yeah. of our I country would say and rather beyond. Rather than follow them, Deborah, it's changing led. your reading glasses. When I was a teenager, I could read this Bible. At at the light of a candle. 
Well, I'm no longer a teenager, so when <laughs> I look at it, I see something black with a little bit of gold here. I open it, I don't know, I cannot see. But when I change my paradigm, I put my reading glasses. These reading glasses don't add anything to it. They make visible what is, what is there. there and I want everybody in the audience yes. to know that God believes in them, that greater is the spirit that is in them than mm -hmm. the one who is messing up with the marketplace, and that they go there and they take the power of God to the marketplace. Amen. Thank you so much. Transformation has taken place in a big way within the city of Vallejo. We will be joined by Pastor Anthony Summers, who has seen the progress there firsthand. So enjoy the words from Ed Silvoso. So glad you're with us today. Don't go away. It's just phenomenal. Our school have been blessed. We see Vallejo as a destination city. We've declared it the city of God. And because we've done that, um, business, government, and education has totally been transformed in our city. Welcome back. The city of Vallejo has seen its share of crime and homelessness. It is also a city seen transformation. Anthony Summers, senior pastor of Impact Bible Ministries, joins us to describe what he sees going on in his community. We thank you for being here with Ed and I. And thank you. Pastor, tell us firsthand, how has this program helped? Well, the, knowing that we are the ecclesia, it is amazing. Under the guise of transformation, we see Vallejo as a destination city. We've declared it the city of God. And because we've done that, um, business, government, and education has totally been transformed in our city. Uh, back in 2009, for instance, um, Dr. Ed Savoso came to our city for uh, a conference that was held there. and. At that, on that one of those days, we talked to the mayor of the city at the time, who happened to be a believer, and, and God just dropped it in my spirit to go to him and say, Mr. Mayor, right on City Hall steps, uh, you need some pastors praying for you. And interestingly, about, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple months later, he gave me a call and said, Pastor Summers, do you remember what you said to me on City Hall Steps? I said, well, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and he said, well, you told me I needed some pastors praying for me. Would you be one of those to come? And for literally seven and a half years, every Tuesday, 3.30 in the afternoon, really? we were in the mayor's office <gasps> praying with him. And if he was not there, he said, would you still please come and cover right. wow. our city in prayer? And we continue to cover Vallejo in prayer. And God is doing miraculous things through business. Um, and we may talk a little bit more about Michael's transportation. Our founder, uh, Michael Brown, he dedicated the company to the Lord after being in a meeting with, with Dr. Dr. Savoso. Savoso. And uh, our business has now doubled in size over the last five years. In fact, we are opening up our fourth location next week. And uh, we're in Vallejo, Sacramento, Watsonville on the Central Coast. And we'll be in Oakland to be able to serve the Bay, uh, wow. greater part of the Bay Area next week. And, and I know that the schools have been affected by all of this and the police Absolutely. department. There has been a Absolutely. lot. In fact, the city is transforming as yes. a result of prayer and yes. people reaching out. Yes. Yes, absolutely. In fact, under the guise of uh, Adopt a Cop, um, we work very close with our police department. I've been invited. Uh, I've been on the police chief's advisory board uh, for the last couple of years now, and it's just phenomenal. Our school have been blessed, and uh, we had we had a former uh, believer, you know. And again, we won't talk too much about the ungodliness that made that shift. But while she was there, we saw her love for the kids, the academies that were raised up in mm -hmm. the school district, has really been turned. And prayer and, was okay. Oh, <laughs> I tell you, absolutely. We can't do it without prayer. Yeah, and prayer on campus is allowed. 
Well, no, to, not no again. And and see, but the good thing is, we didn't have to go in with that modality. We went in to serve. Okay. We've gone in and adopted schools, and by simply having a servant heart and doing what we call servant evangelism, we asked the principals, "How can we serve you? Yes. What do you need for us to do?" And so we bring the kingdom uh, to, to the schools. And there is a <laughs> okay. transformation. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Ed, what did you say that caused Michael's transportation to change their philosophy? Well, actually, I was doing my first seminar on the book Anointed for Business, mm -hmm. not yes. too far from here in Oakland. And Michael was invited to come, not knowing what the seminar was about. He later on told me, I thought it was one of those <laughs> name it and claim it. But actually, <laughs> the book is different. The book is that Jesus was a businessman. Mm -hmm. His apostles came from the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the seminar, I talked to the pastors, pastor to pastor, and I said, I think we need to apologize to the marketplace ministers for having relegated them to the back of the bus, mm -hmm. so to speak. So I let the pastor, actually it was Pastor Dave Kigley's uh, yes, church. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We knelt Shiloh. down. And when we ask forgiveness, Michael's heart melted because all his life he felt a call to the ministry, ah. but not to the ministry in the church, but in the city. He went back to Vallejo, yes. dedicated <laughs> the company, anointed the buses with oil, I mean, appointed, got the father chairman of the board, Jesus CEO, <laughs> Holy Spirit legal counsel. There's a DVD on our website that people can go and watch it. Yes. And the revenue has been doubling and oh, doubling yeah. and doubling. And now they sold the company to the employees. Yes for no money, <laughs> so tremendous. Well, they sold the company besides, <laughs> so it's all because uh, they want to serve their communities, yeah. but they really want to serve the Lord, and that's what this right. is all about. Absolutely. We are out of time already. I can't believe it. You have to come back. I know there's so much more. For more information about Transform Our World, uh, or to get in touch with Dr. Ed Silvoso, visit transformourworld.org or ktln.tv. Remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry. Programs like this are made possible through your support. Books written by Ed and his wife are available on their website. More information about Dr. Silvoso and where you can hear him speak also available on their website, so make sure you go there. Thank you for being with us today, and we hope you join us again next week.